Saturday, the 29th of June, 2024, is the Solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul, Apostles. Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If I am left to myself, behold, I am nothing and all weakness. But if you suddenly look upon me, I presently become strong and am replenished with new joy. Daily Prayer Heavenly Father, you sent us your Son Jesus that we might be freed from the tyranny of sin and death. Increase my faith in the power of your saving word and give me freedom to love and serve others with generosity and mercy as you have loved me. Amen. Introduction to the Liturgy of the Word Solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul Peter, a poor fisherman, was called by Christ to lead and care for Christ's entire flock. Feed my sheep. John chapter 21 verse 17 It was Peter who received a vision confirming that the good news was to be preached to those the Jews considered unclean, the pagan Gentiles. Acts chapter 10 verse 9 Paul, the former Pharisee, carried out this missionary mandate. In the course of his preaching, he was flogged, beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, and attacked by brigands. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 24. Both Peter and Paul ended their ministry in Rome around the year 64. Tradition holds that Peter was crucified upside down and Paul beheaded by the sword. What unites Peter and Paul is Jesus, his love for them and their love for him. The Epistle now I know for certain that the Lord rescued me from the hand of Herod. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 1. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword, and when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly the angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought, he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, 
and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. When Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people had been expecting. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34 The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The Second Epistle From now on the crown of righteousness awaits me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks. Be to God. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel You are Peter, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others 
Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. Psalm 34, verse 4 This feast of the two great apostles, Peter and Paul, provides a shining illustration of how people who are very different can, as today's responsorial psalm describes, extol God's name and give him glory together. God used Peter and Paul's complementary backgrounds and gifts and personalities to accomplish his plan. Paul was an educated scholar of the law. Peter was a fisherman with little formal education. Paul chose to be single and recommended that state in life. Peter was married and was familiar with the demands of family life. Paul spent several years in prayer and study before embarking on his mission, while Peter tended to act impetuously. God entrusted each of them with a unique mission, Peter primarily to the Jews as well as serving as head of the church, and Paul primarily to the Gentiles. Sometimes they didn't see eye to eye. For example, Although Peter had been the first to welcome the Gentiles into the church, Paul had to correct him later for drawing back from them at a meal. Acts chapter 10 verse 30 and Galatians chapter 2 verse 11. Despite their differences and disagreements, surely these two saints and apostles had a profound respect for one another. Together they accomplished far more than either could have achieved on his own. This kind of collaboration has always been part of God's plan for his church. Just think about the different people who have served God's people over the ages and the amazing things that God accomplished through their diverse personalities and gifts. Think of how each member of Christ's body, working according to their abilities and talents, glorifies God. That includes both you and those with completely different backgrounds from yourself. Together, like Saints Peter and Paul, we can glorify the Lord, both now and forever in heaven. Lord, may your people glorify you together. Amen. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, I'm Shirley, 
residential realtor for many years. As a professional, I welcome and encourage you to contact me whether you are buying or selling a home. Or if you know like-minded people like yourself that you want me to help guide through this overwhelming process. Whether in the Dallas Metroplex or across the country, I'd love to assist in your real estate needs. Click the link in the description below to land on my website for a plethora of real estate information. Thank you and blessings upon you and yours.